<clears throat> My name is Roger Smith, and I'm the CEO of General Motors. So what's the problem? Why am I even talking to you? I'll tell you the problem. Japan. I hear Honda this, and Toyota that, and even Subaru. Is the whole world now a girl? When I was nine years old, I set points ignition, and roast beef sandwich, thanks. And now, my son is a sissy, playing with Nintendo buttons. The future? It's buttons. Fill the grand period with buttons. Buttons on the steering wheel. Put buttons on the center console. Make them control the seat. Every part of the seat. What are you looking at, Hank? You square? You like computers, don't you, Hank? Squares like computers. Put squares on the dash. Put squares on the taillights. You like that, Hank? Hank is gonorrhea. You know that? No, Hank, you stay put. Is the car aerodynamic? Great. Call it an aero package. Keith, you're a mathematician, right? How many times have you watched me urinate? How many times can we make the seat move all around? 30? Great. Pontiac. We're driving excitement. Ah, now that's the slogan. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Keith, I love what you do for me in the men's room with your eyes. <laughs> okay, think. Think twice. It's another day for you and me in paradise. Keith, I'm going to the men's room. You're coming with me. It's 1989. Pontiac Grand Prix and I have a hard time getting out of this character. Because 80s, General Motors, lowers your expectation until anything that isn't American and throttle body injection is futuristic. And Josh is gen- uh, here we go. And Josh's Grand Prix is the cleanest I've ever seen. The paint is flawless. Except for like one tiny chip and I forget where it is. No dash cracks or seat rips. And the graphic equalizer works. The only thing is the digital speedometer. It's like trying to play a Game Boy Advance outdoors. What is performance sound and why is the switch on the door? According to Josh, the owner, all this button does is turn off the center speakers to give you a more, uh, let's make it sound super stereo, I guess. Now, as futuristic as General Motors was trying to make the Grand Prix, it wasn't above GM screwing up. The warning lights, okay, you have this little outline of the car here. And like your warning lights are supposed to appear, like pointing at stuff. Now, they're just the square warning lights that showed up on every single General Motors just plastered behind. They don't even line up with anything. And screw you, though, because I need a special tool to change the air filter. The Grand Prix stood tall in an age where Pontiac's slogan was, we build excitement, despite only two of their cars really offering any, the Firebird and the Fiero. Grand Prix Coupes ran from 1962 to 2002, while the sedans ran from 1989 to 2008. So this is a fifth-gen model on a first-gen W body, a platform that cost General Motors in the realm of $7 billion to develop. When the platform entered development in 1982, they codenamed it the GM10. It was a project overseen by Roger Smith who wanted to use it to replace all mid-sized cars that were on the G and A platforms. Now, the idea was to have a total of seven GM plants, all producing cars with a W body. Each plant would be responsible for 250,000 cars apiece, some 21% of the entire U.S. market. But this didn't happen. None of it did. The corporate restructuring in 1984 derailed the GM10 program completely, due to employees being moved off the project and onto others, leaving a lack of clarity on who was supposed to be doing what. In a single year, the manager in charge of the program changed twice. The objective of replacing all mid-sized cars produced by Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, and Buick was sound enough, and it even made sense to split production among the various plants so that each would be tasked with building different body styles whether a sedan, station wagon, or coupe, without the risk of overtaxing any individual plant. But between the restructuring and the company's financial concerns, it suddenly was no longer practical to produce all of these GM10 cars at the same time. They canceled plans for a station wagon body style and reduced the number of GM plants producing the platform down to four. But by the time they got the two-door coupes and the four-door sedans out the door, the Ford Taurus was taking attention away which necessitated top-down restylings so that the W body cars didn't look too much like the Taurus. Why does this need to be, why do these cup holders need to be carpeted? And also they're not gonna hold anything. 
As each W body car was released, General Motors discovered that the market research that promised them the loyalty of coupe-loving yuppies was a pipe dream hiding in the new reality of rising demand for family size offerings. The project flopped so spectacularly that by 1989, the company was losing $2,000 on every GM 10 car they made. It was the failure of the goals Roger Smith had pinned on his idealistic vision board, turning General Motors into a Japan-adjacent, tech-heavy brand with fancy circuits, onboard computers, and buttons galore. All assembled by machines in a factory where each car was made to order through computers. In that way, Smith had the capacity for genuine vision, but seemed to lack the ability to tether his imagination to a tangible reality. That's why some of these didn't really last over the years, because how it was really neat stuff, but not a lot of it really held up. Yeah. That's why the only time I even, even really see these anymore, it's either like this, or it's rotted out. That's a unique parking brake, or parking, uh, or four-way. But to turn your lights off, you gotta go down here. Yep. So yeah, it's funny, 88 to, 9, 88 to 89 this year had a, a digital odometer and trip, Oh wait, so down here is all your interior lights are off. Yep. And then that's... And that's the dimmer, and then you push it all the way up when it clicks. That's what turns the lights on when the, door, uh, the doors are closed. Oh, okay. And then if you want, if you want to turn the key, you can also do English and metric on the right. What? Oh, because oh, you have a digital speedometer. Yep. A little toggle switch for it. Oh man, I love the smell so much. It's like after school homework club. <laughs> So that is just, okay, so, so that want, is just one, one swipe. Yep, so that's like, that's like pushing down on like a regular car. Up is the, is the solution. And if you push that inside that, that's the intermittent. Oh, damn. And then, yeah, you just push off. See, this, off. Like, I know it takes a minute, but this is so much better than the GM. Let's put all of these controls on one stick down here. That's on my, I have a celebrity wagon. That's how that is. Yeah. I hate that. This Grand Prix offers the 2.8 liter LTR multi-point fuel injection V6 making only 130 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque. Give it a little rep. Okay, so she's all warmed up. Here's the hill, hill, hill pull. <laughs> so it might shift a little hard. Goes right to where that's second, that's second gear, uh -huh. and it's gonna hang second for forever. Yes, it is. I'm not even gonna bother yeah, wrapping it out. It's like gonna sit at 60. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nuts. You gotta sit around 3,500 RPM to get up a mountain incline. It'd be better with a manual, and these did come standard with a manual transmission. But this particular model has the four-speed automatic, where fourth is overdrive. Josh bought this car as a winter car. But then once you saw how beautiful it was and how perfect everything is, it became a summer car. In fact, it only really comes out during Ferrari weather. And this car cleans up at Radwood. Oh, I don't care whatever Ferrari you have. Holy crap, that's an 89 Grand Prix and it's mint. That's where this car shines. And also on the highway, it's okay. It's a low stakes highway cruiser. While driving it, you're going to stop idealizing it. But that also means you won't expect more from this Grand Prix than it's willing to offer, which is a great mentality for used cars in 2022. But not so much back in 1989. New buyers wanted something more conservative and traditionalists wanted something less foreign. With the pervasive technology, it's adjustable side wings for the seats. The seats is really what this car is about. 30-way adjustable seat. Everything else kind of fades into the background when you realize you can have perfect back support and thigh support and like support for your obliques, which I didn't even know could be a thing. You could get the perfect driving position in this. You got to pay a lot of money for 30 way adjustable seats today. I mean, and back then they were just showcasing the seat adjustments right there on the center console so everybody can look at it. This car did make Motor Trend Car of the Year in 1988, but I don't really know how much that means. Does it drive well? It drives decent from a period where General Motors wasn't doing very well. And I guess if you wanted to be a wise ass, you'd say, well, you're gonna have to be a little bit more specific. According to some of the sources we found, Roger Smith's GM was having a harder time than most. For instance, to maximize value, GM needed to make cars in large volumes. So the idea of scaling to smaller numbers like the Japanese did in order to spend less to make more 
just wouldn't work. GM needed to, to produce something in the range of 100,000 cars to turn a profit on development, whereas some Japanese manufacturers could turn a profit on fewer than 40,000 cars. And while General Motors did sell a lot of Fieros in the mid-80s, a corporate governance case study on General Motors found that the bulk of the market for Fieros was young women who found the style and handling appealing. The report even suggested that there was evidence that women enjoyed the Fiero because the power steering made them easier to park. But when GM got rid of the power steering to save money, Japanese manufacturers like Toyota were there just there to pick up the slack. In a way, it's easier to understand why people criticized this era of Pontiac over the late 90s or 2000s. Because by that point, people really didn't expect more from Pontiac because they were so used to being let down. But in 89, there was still hope. There was every possibility of a return to form. But Pontiac became the twice a month dad who cultivates harvests of disappointment. You live on diminishing hope until you resign yourself to the reality of who they've become as they use the last of their grocery store money to buy a fistful of auto-selected Powerball numbers and walk out of the grocery store with another set of promises you know they're not going to keep. You recognize that it'll be up to you to make your own entertainment because you're not going to be getting any help. And that's how it became with the Grand Prix. As long as you accept it isn't going to come to all of your ball games and yell at a boy on every ground road double, then this isn't a car that will let you down. These ashtrays right here, oh, it's great, but they're surrounded by carpet. So if you have your cigarette, you got to be perfect hitting that or else you're going to burn, 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 burn. Oh good, I was waiting for some GM bullshit. And it's right here, the rear seat. You lift it up, you push the seat forward, and it falls right back. So you need two hands yep. to get out. There's, there's been times where when some of my friends get out of I usually help them get out. They don't have to like straddle the seat. You can make your own merriment. Arguably the most merriment of all. The merriment of low expectations being exceeded. And this exceeded my expectations. I had fun driving this. I enjoyed looking at it. In a Calvin and Hobbes way, my expectations are lowered to the point that they're already met even before I drive the car. Maybe this was at Radwood, Philly. I hope so. Everybody Wang Chung. Everybody grow Wang. Somebody take my tray back. I'm asserting my dominance at the lunch table because I have a D-plus average. Take my tray back. Take my tray back because I want control over something. Caution, wet floor. Delay my wipers and change my diaper. My wife's a whore. Driver pass, lit ass. How we doing? This is a way to end it. I need a bust so I can use the gym and not be horny in the sauna because my imagination goes sailing. Take me away, Rehoboth.